requirements for TAs at Drexel, which include recitation, lab, office hours, and grading. We cover university procedures such as our add and drop policy. Uh, we talk about office hours and the ways to make the most of them. We cover classroom etiquette, academic conduct, and we cover Drexel resources. We give them a tour of the library and they become acquainted with the offices that they can uh, refer to if there are issues regarding discrimination, harassment, disabilities, and public safety. We cover Greek life a little bit, and we especially focus on the International Graduate Student Association so that they know that they are not alone on weekends and other times, and uh, they can have a social life as, as well. Uh, with regard to American culture, we cover American government, the American character, holidays, sports, the arts, and introduce them to Philadelphia teams, theaters, restaurants, and museums, and this year, even a little bit of Philadelphia history. During these four weeks, we meet every morning for three hours and at least three afternoons. One afternoon is devoted to movies. A second afternoon is devoted to tutorials with the instructor. This can be one-on-one -on -one or pairs or groups. A third afternoon, they have an opportunity to meet with conversation partners. We give them topics to explore and perhaps to experience. And at the end of the program, the TAs have pair or group presentations on some aspect of American culture. And the conversation partner helps them prepare for this. We also have one cultural outing. This year, it was the Philadelphia Histor History Museum. In the past, it's been Independence Hall and the National Constitution Center. Okay. okay, so that's our program, just so you have an idea of the types of things that we do. Um, and this, the Teaching Identity Project was, was added within all of that. So now I'm gonna to talk to you just a bit about the goals of this project. The goals are really four items. We want to help the ITAs identify the range of qualities of effective teachers, of all effective teachers, and realize that there is a large range, that there isn't just one type. Two, to identify their own strengths and to understand how these characteristics can be highlighted in the classroom. So a lot of the project, it's a reflective project, is asking them to look at themselves and see what they, what unique characteristics they can bring to the classroom. Three, determine the teaching style that's most comfortable for them. So as we'll talk about throughout the project, they test out different styles and they try to figure out what feels right. And then uh, that's the fourth one, test out their teaching identities in many lessons, get feedback, reflect on what works, and even more importantly, maybe what feels right. Okay, so to the next slide. We're gonna talk about now just the uh, organization of the project, the basic weekly assignments that they have and what we do with them on a weekly basis. And then after that, we'll talk a little bit about specific activities that we do. Okay, so the first day of class. On the first day, we break the ITAs into small groups for the purpose of having them focus on effective and ineffective teaching. We ask them to do the following. Describe the best teachers they've had and to list the qualities that made these teachers so effective. We asked them if there was anything in particular in those classes that made them enjoy them. Uh, they also have to describe their instructors who are not effective. And they have to discuss what these teachers could have done differently to make their classes more enjoyable. Finally, we have them list some of their fears about their future teacher assignments. After the group work, we asked the students what came out of their group discussions. We asked them to tell us what effective teachers do. And we listed about 14 items. Uh, for example, they told us effective teachers give encouragement. Next slide. <laughs> effective teachers provide real life experiences. Uh, they give feedback. They inspire their students. And they simplify difficult material. Then we covered the ineffective teachers. They told us the ineffective ones speak in the monotone voice. They show a lack of respect to their students. They're not available for their students. They're not prepared for class. And sometimes they're even confrontational. And after creating the list together, 
we ask them to keep in mind what it is that they want to be as a teacher. Okay, so on to the next slide. So that first day, as Alexis just explained, we have them uh, have a lengthy discussion about the qualities of a good teacher and ineffective teachers, etc. That day, after the first uh, after, after the first day of class, we give them their first homework assignment, and this assignment frames the teaching identity reflective project throughout the rest of our program. So, for the first assignment, we actually give them a, a notebook and an old school Mead marble notebook, and we do that for a variety of reasons. But mostly, we want them to keep the reflections together. Um, in the past, it was papers here and there, so we actually give them a notebook to record everything. Their first assignment is to write what we call their teaching identity statement in their notebook. So I'll read exactly the assignment here. It says, write a brief statement about the teacher that you would like to be. In other words, what are the qualities that you believe would make you a successful teacher? Which of these qualities do you feel you could comfortably embody? Which of these qualities do you feel would be difficult for you? So the idea here is to make a statement. Who do you want to be as a teacher? And what do you feel comfortable in, within that? What do you feel comfortable doing? And what might be hard for you? For example, you might say, I want to be funny. Let's just use that one as an example, but I don't feel like a funny person. So that would be something that would be difficult. The way we do it is because, as Alexis uh, explained, we have afternoon tutorial sessions. The way we did it this year is we had the students talk about their teaching identity statements, share them within their tutorial sessions. But we, in the past, have done it in class um, in a variety of different ways. Okay. So, next slide. Okay, our weekly tasks. Um, so what are the tasks and um, activities that we feel can help our students become effective teachers? Well, we spend time on nonverbal communication. Uh, interaction activities that teach them ways to get students involved. They learn the value of pair and group activities. They practice role playing. They do role playing of difficult situations, office hour situations. And with the help of a videotape from the Harvard DeBach series, Thinking Together, they learn about creating interaction even in large lecture groups. We spend a lot of time on questioning, uh, such as the use and value of different types of questions. And they get practice on how to field questions and how to ask questions effectively. One of my favorite activities is showing the video from the DeBach series, The Act of Teaching, and trying out their suggestions. The, uh, the Act of Teaching covers landing your energy, naming your objective, overcoming stage fright, enjoying the pleasure of using words, and using metaphors to make your examples more vivid or memorable. And our students' favorite seems to be the weekly 10 to 15 minute mini lessons. During those lessons, they are encouraged to experiment with the teaching techniques that they've been working on. At the end of each lesson, they receive oral and written feedback. And on their own, they're asked to evaluate the videotape of their lesson and assess the progress that they're making in their teaching identity. Okay. You can, there you go. Um, so throughout the week, as Alexis mentioned, the ITAs learn a lot of teaching strategies. They work on the linguistic functions like pronunciation, enunciation, and then they do mini lessons. And after each mini lesson each week, we ask the ITAs to do the same homework assignment. They have the same assignment each week, and that's to watch their video and to respond in their journals in paragraph form um, to these questions. What do you feel that you did well in this lesson? What would you like to improve upon? What aspects of your teaching would you like to develop in the upcoming weeks? So we ask them to set goals. So what would you like to work on? And then finally, um, to connect it to their original statement that they wrote on the first day, look back on your teaching identity statement that you wrote at the beginning of the program. Is there anything you'd like to add or change? So we ask them at the end of each week, after they've learned a lot of new strategies, after they've been encouraged to test them out in their mini lessons, is there anything from that first day that you'd like to add? Or maybe something you'd like to take away from that teaching identity statement. Okay. 
So now um, we are going to talk about a couple of additional activities that we do throughout the week just to get them thinking about their own characteristics, their own strengths, who they want to be as teachers. And the first one, you can switch slides here. Um, the first one, we have some video clips to go along with it, and I'm not sure it's going to work, but we can, we can try. Um, the first one is to compare presentation styles and really teaching styles. We do tell our ITAs that what we teach them about teaching techniques, that they're really uh, presentation techniques. And so what we do is take two videos or two clips from two different presentations or teaching clips and to compare them. And I, use, I usually choose two that are very different, but both very good. So um, for example, this year I chose, and this is actually the next slide, so we might have to go back and forth. This year I chose two TED Talks, and I chose them because they're relatively short. They're both six minutes. They're both on the uh, subject of education. And they're both really different in terms of the way the presenters speak and their stage presence. So first one, Christopher Emden's, um, Christopher Emden's Teach Teachers How to Create Magic and Ramsey Masalam's Three Rules to Spark Learning. So now you can go back. <laughs> so the, the ITAs watch the two uh, videos and then they discuss these questions. How are these two presentation styles different? Discuss their presenters' characteristics. So they are quite different. Are they both effective? Are they both engaging? And the answer should be yes. I try to pick successful ones, um, but they're engaging and effective for different reasons. Which presenter did you relate with more? And then finally, what personal characteristics do you have that could make your presentations interesting or engaging? Now, we can see if we can watch just a very short mm -hmm. clip. I'm not sure it was difficult to work. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and um, try to cue the clips. I'll only devote a minute to it. And if we can't get it working in a minute, we'll just move right along and ask folks to check the video out on their that's, own. Yeah, that's fine. I can say a little bit while you're working that out. The, the first one, uh, the presenter is very engaging. He uses a lot of nonverbal communication, gestures, uh, a lot of intonation, his voice is up and down, but he kind of stands in one place throughout the presentation. The second one is more traditional. Uh, the speaker speaks in a more monotone voice, uses PowerPoint, but uses the PowerPoint very effectively. Um, let's see. Traditional is a good way to explain it, but it's also very engaging just the way that he his mannerisms He walks more on the stage, but doesn't use a lot of gestures. So this is the first um, So you just have to give me a second here Okay um, Is there a particular section you like me to cue? Um, you know, it was about a minute into it. So if you want to just jump mm -hmm. a little I will jump to a minute. Yeah. All right. We'll go ahead and um, cue for everyone. I hope you don't mind if I don't do it full screen. We don't hear it. I, I don't hear it. I'm not sure. If... Um, okay. Let me just see. I think that um, it might. Um, if you just give me a moment, I undid the headphones. Maybe that will help the situation. Who's trying to make sense of how to. Can you hear that? Yep. Great. Okay. So I'm going to go back to minute one. Okay. Just cue me when to stop, Anne, okay? Okay, sure. Like at 30 seconds, I'll tell you when. Great. There's a first year teacher at home who is pouring through lesson plans, trying to make sense of standards, who's trying to make sense of how to grade students appropriately, while at the same time saying to herself over and over again, don't smile till November, because that's what she was taught in her teacher education program. Right now, there is a student who is coming up with a way to convince his mom or dad that he's very, very sick and can't make it to school tomorrow. On the other hand, right now, there are amazing educators that are sharing information, information that's shared in such a beautiful way 
that the students are sitting at the edge of their seats just waiting for a bead of sweat to drop off the face of this person so they can soak up all that knowledge. Okay, that's, I think that gives you an idea. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> just give me one second and I'll navigate back to the presentation. Okay, can you folks uh, see the presentation? Yep. Great. Okay. Um, do you wanna go on to the next video, Anne, or were there any additional comments you wanted to make? No, I think we can go on to the next one. So, I mean, I already summarized that, that pr uh, particular presenter used, I don't know if you could tell from that small clip, but uses a lot of uh, gestures and um, his voice is very dynamic. It goes up and down, lots of, uh, repetition, if you were to watch a little thing, kind of repeats the same idea with a lot of emphasis and is very engaging. Mm -hmm. So if we can get this one up, you can, you'll be able to see that it's um, more traditional, as I said before. Mm -hmm. All right, um, I'll go ahead and get this, this next video up. And you know, about a minute, I don't remember exactly, Elizabeth, but you can go about a minute into it. Um, just give me one second, folks, while I cue the video. Hi, I lost the picture again. Yep, uh, we're about to bring it back up. Oh, okay, thank you. I'm going off. Yeah, just hang on. We're um, cueing the video, and then we're about to bring it back up. Okay, so you folks should be able to see the video now. Yep. Um, and you should be able to hear it. I'm going to go ahead and play it at minute five. Obviously, as Maddie's chemistry teacher, I love that she went home and continued to geek out about this kind of ridiculous demonstration that we did in class. But what fascinated me more is that Maddie's curiosity took her to a new level. If you look inside that beaker, you might see a candle. Maddie's using temperature to extend this phenomena to a new scenario. You know, questions and curiosity like Maddie's are magnets that draw us towards our teachers and they transcend all technology or buzzwords in education. But if we place these technologies before student okay. record. That's good enough, I think. Okay. Get an idea. So um, while you get back to the presentation, I can just say, so these are just two examples and there are many, many, many other videos that can be used. But the idea is to choose two, two presentations, two videos that show different styles and to have the students realize that very different styles can also, can all be effective. Okay, so that's the idea there. So Alexis is gonna talk about another activity that we do to have the students <coughs> find their own strengths within themselves. Yeah, um, at Drexel University, like many other universities, we give awards to excellent teaching assistants every year. And students have a chance to nominate their favorite TAs throughout the year. And on Graduate Student Day in May, we hand out the awards. Well, because we are involved in helping to select the winners, we are privy to the nominations that these TAs receive. So for the benefit of our TAs, we give them some samples of the nominations after deleting the names, of course, of the people who are nominated. Then we ask our TAs to, to look at the nominations, to look for patterns, repeated comments, repeated adjectives and, and descriptions. And we ask them which comments describe their own teaching and which characteristics that they would feel comfortable incorporating into their own teaching style. And I always like to tell them that throughout the years, many international teaching assistants have won awards, even those who still had language issues. And why did they win? Well, their students usually said it was their passion, their patience, and their willingness to go the extra mile. Okay. 
Okay, uh, and then the last activity that we'll talk about today is one that I'm sure many of you do within your ITA programs. Uh, we have the students, the ITAs, contact their departments and identify a lab recitation or lecture to observe. And we have them fill out a questionnaire about their observation, but essentially we're asking them what worked well in this lesson and what might you have done differently. Um, so we ask them to kind of consider themselves in front of this class. They finally have a real picture of what it is to be in front of a real class, unlike the many lessons that we sort of simulate in our, class, in our classrooms. And we ask them to think about their own unique characteristics and what they could have brought to that situation, to that classroom, that would make it more interesting, more engaging, more, um, or, or maybe the professor, the TA, had a really great way of doing something and they might want to incorporate that in their own teaching. Okay. Okay. So at the end of the program, the TAs are given a questionnaire with three questions. One, before the ITA program, what did you consider to be the ideal qualities of a teacher? Two, by the end of the program, how did your idea of the ideal teacher evolve? For example, did you find other characteristics that you felt were important? or characteristics you had not considered before. Or maybe there was a quality that you thought was an important quality, but you no longer think it's so important. And then the third question, which activities during our summer program help you understand better who you would like to be as a teacher? In other words, which activities <laughs> Um, I'm going to go ahead and mute that. Alexis, could you do the last um, bullet point again? It was drowned out from my background noise. I'm sorry. The last, she wants you to read the last one again. The last slide? No, it's just the last bullet point. Oh, the last activity. question? The last okay. question. Yeah, so which activities during our summer program helped you understand better who you would like to be as a teacher? Uh, in other words, which activities helped you form your teaching identity? Okay. So, um, that's the bulk of the program. And uh, we, we collected their journals at the end of the summer program and looked at some of the reflections that they made, their, their initial teaching identity statements and the reflections they made after each mini lesson and at the very end. And we have five examples that we're gonna read to you just so you can see how these identities evolved over the course of four weeks. So student one is Alexis's. Okay. So here's an example of a reflection that a student wrote after his mini lesson. I thought the most important thing for a teacher is to teach abstract science with application. And after my mini lesson, I might add to my teaching identity statement, smile, I should smile, and I should welcome students' questions. And perhaps I should create a variety of activities inside the class. So I thought that was quite revealing. <laughs> And the second student was one of mine, and she came to the IT program, as you'll see, with this idea of a TA um, as a sort of needing to be rigid and establish her authority. She wrote, this was her original identity statement, an excerpt. I don't want to pretend to be one of them. This would be obviously fake. Instead, I, want, I would like to be someone they envision themselves being in a few years. I don't think I'm the type of comedian, but I would like my students to enjoy the time spent together, but not take it too lightly. In terms of discipline, I prefer to set up some rules. And she went on to explain what all those rules would be. It was a very um, strict, let's say, a lot of division between the, the teacher and students. After her mini lessons, uh, she reflected, uh, she wrote this. I feel that maybe student can actually be kind and well behaved and maybe it would not be necessary to draw such a sharp line between me and them as I thought. I am actually getting more excited about becoming a TA. And I don't think this was just the mini lessons I should say. I think we, you know, our conversation partner program with the undergraduates panel discussions with undergraduates and TAs, but consistently reflecting on what they thought they would be as a teacher and then thinking about how they now think of themselves as teacher, uh, as a teacher, I think is useful for them to see, okay? And student three was another of mine. Um, this is a reflection after one of the mini lessons. She wrote, I asked a lot of questions to engage student and I should wait for three seconds for them to answer. This is very important in class. 
It's part of the culture in American class and it's useful. It also helped me think, get time to think of answer. I will add this to my teaching identity statement. Wait three seconds for answer. And I, I chose this one specifically because of its simplicity. Uh, what we try to explain to the students is there are some very little things that you can do in your classroom to make the class more successful and to be a more successful teacher. And this is an example of something that anybody, you know, regardless of your character, <laughs> regardless of your personality, can do. And the students appreciate it. Okay, and for the fourth student, uh, this is what um, she wrote. At the beginning, I thought, well, based on my experiences with three teachers I admire, I hope to be a teacher who has a broad knowledge, makes hard things simple, and can help students when they're in trouble. Be knowledgeable, be patient to students, be considerate about the problems or difficulties students may have, and help them overcome them. And at the end of the program, I thought, and these things are important. Effective communication, including eye contact, and lots of interactions with students. Be kind and open to students. Ask questions and welcome questions. And good communication between teacher and students is also an essential part of good teaching. And I know I need to improve my eye contact. I need to avoid talking to the blackboard and I need to make topics more related to daily life. And for me, it was wonderful to see this because this was somebody who was really resisting certain changes. So it was great to see that by the end of the program, uh, the changes were important. And the fifth one, I think, is also mine. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning, I thought, the ideal teacher is someone who has the knowledge and, more importantly, the ability to transfer that knowledge to his students and general public. Also, he must have the vision of the importance of educating people so that he would put time and effort in educational activities. You know, very serious. At the end of the program, I thought, during the program, I learned a lot about how people learn new things and how they process information in a different way. That suggests me to be flexible with different teaching and learning styles so that I can benefit the majority of the people in my class. I think flexibility is very important for a teacher and dealing with questions effectively is important too. And again, I felt really gratified to see that kind of uh, learning that went on. Okay, so. The question for ourselves was, what did we learn? Well, I think we learned that it's important for our TAs to know about the types of behavior and teaching techniques that usually work in today's more student-centered classrooms, where interaction between teacher and students is expected. But each teacher has to find his or her own way of creating a classroom environment that is compatible with his or her personality and facilitates learning. Yes, we can experiment with different ways of achieving this goal. It won't happen right away. Things change, we change, and every class is different. Therefore, frequent self-reflection on how effective we as teachers are at achieving our teaching goals and our student learning goals is extremely important. And we feel this activity that Anne created and we conducted together with our students really can start them on the right track of discovery and reflection. And the goal was really to have the ITAs leave our program with a bit more confidence. Uh, confidence that they don't need to change who they are, that they don't need to be anybody different just because they're in a different country. They have a lot to to uh, worry about in terms of just teaching the class. So they don't need to change who they are. They can find their strengths. And as my professor once told me, teach to their personality and they're gonna be great. So you can move on to the next slide. And this is the last slide actually, and then we'll take some questions or comments. Um, adaptation, so our program as Alexis mentioned in the very beginning is uh, unique in the sense that we teach, we can teach pedagogy, language, culture. I know that some programs 
do not include pedagogy. So uh, it could actually, I think, be a very good language project. Instead of written journals as we did, they could be oral journals. Feedback could be given not only on the content, but also the language use. I think it could easily, it's a project that includes a lot of discussion. <laughs> and so it, I think it could be framed as a language project as well. Length of time, I think it can be certainly longer, more time, more experience, more reflection would be great, even shorter, I think it might work out well. Um, and then finally, tracking. The project could extend, and Alexis and I are discussing extending it into tracking the ITAs in their first teaching experiences to find out how these identities evolve after they have their first assignment. So they draft this teaching identity statement before ever teaching. They get these sort of mini teaching experiences with a very friendly audience of teachers and uh, some undergraduate students and other ITAs. And it evolves, but how does it evolve even further once they're actually in, in the classroom? So that's something that we would like to do. And um, so thank you all very much for listening to our presentation. We are ready and welcome to take any questions and comments. And thank you, Elizabeth, for doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so th well, thank you, um, Ann and Alexis, for going ahead and being brave enough to be the first um, I <laughs> our presenters. Um, you did a marvelous job. Um, and so here's how we're gonna handle questions. And I see that um, Barbara's already figured out how we're gonna do it. Um, we're gonna ask you to use the raise your hand function on, on the Zoom um, application. And as soon as you do that, I'll go ahead and in order um, unmute you and allow you to ask your question. If you can't find the raise your hand um, function, go ahead and try to send uh, the group a chat. And I'll try and do my best to moderate um, questions as they come in. Um, it's currently 1.43, so we have about 15 minutes um, to handle questions. Um, and then we'll have to go ahead and end the webinar. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and um, unmute our first questioner and um, we'll get into um, the discussion portion. Okay. Okay, hi, thank you very much. Very interesting. Uh, will we be able to get the slides? Can you email them to us or is there a place sure. we can get copies? Absolutely, I'd be happy to do that. I think Elizabeth, you can step in because I think she is going to post it is that right, Elizabeth? To yeah. So I, um, I can do a couple things. I'll go ahead and share the slides over the original list. Um, but we're also going to try, I've recorded this video and we're going to try and post the recording um, on a TESOL hosted site um, and send the link to everyone on the original list as well. Um, and so hopefully we'll be able to share it that way. Wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Elizabeth, can I? Uh, we're having a hard time hearing you. It's really low. I'm not sure. Do you have your... Oh, I took my headphones off to um, uh, facilitate the volume on the videos we showed. Um, I'll try and speak more loudly. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks. So we have another question that came through on the chat. And um, they asked, um, how do you evaluate your ITA students in your course? And how do you evaluate the effectiveness of the course itself? So that's a two-part question. For okay. Sure. So I can, do you want me to take that or did you? Okay. So the way we evaluate the ITAs um, is really we have, is we evaluate their language. We don't evaluate what they've learned in turn. Well, that's not true, actually. Let me go back. We do a modified version of the OPI for all of our ITAs at the end of the program. And that is their language evaluation for the program and we report that to the departments. We used to, in the past when we were using the speak test, that I, th I think, and this might have been even before me, used to be the only evaluation measure that was used. Now the mini lessons also inform our recommendation to the department. So it's possible that an ITA who doesn't do as well as we think they should on, on our mod modified version of the OPI, um, but they've done an excellent job with the mini lessons, then we could make the recommendation to the department that the student is ready. So it's really both the mini lessons as well as the language assessment. Right, and, and based, on, based on both, they get their recommendation, whether it's a recitation, whether it's a lab, whether it's just grading. Um, but 
the, the mini lesson has always been rather important, because, especially when we were using the speak test. Mm -hmm. We often felt that it wasn't very, very useful. And if um, departments needed somebody to teach right away, um, we had to think about the, the mini lesson. Mm -hmm. And can I follow up? They would like to know, how do you evaluate the effectiveness of the course itself? Of the course? Okay. At the end of the program, we give the students a program evaluation. And it's pretty lengthy. We ask them questions um, about all the different parts of the program, what was effective, what was not. And so that's, that's how we do that. Okay. Um, are there any other questions for Anne and Alexis or any comments that people want to make about similar activities they do in their own programs? Or if you'd love to hear that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and if folks need any help, um, feel free to go ahead and send your questions through the chat if you can't find the raise your hand function. But of course, if there aren't any other questions, we understand that too. Okay, great. Um, so I'm going to, folks who are on the chat can probably see um, a con the contribution that was just added, but I'll go ahead and read it aloud. Um, so they say that they also use uh, the OPIC um, and they use it as an evaluation. We have a pre-course survey of their um, perceptions of best teaching practice followed by post-course survey and look for change. Mm -hmm. And um, here, here at Penn, we um, do something similar as well in evaluating the program. Um, we don't do a pre-course survey though, we just do a post program survey. Um, I think it might be a good idea to, um, to gate that pre-course survey. I think um, measuring that qualitative change is a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How long is your program at Penn? Um, our program at Penn is seven to eight weeks. Yep, so we have about twice the time you folks do at Drexel. So another- and How many hours do you spend each day? Uh, we spend four hours a day on language instruction. And then we have one hour a week for tutorials. Um, so another question has come through, um, and someone has asked uh, of Ann and Alexis, how much participation do you get from the departments? Do supervisors observe many lessons? Uh, no, they don't, but we do have undergraduate students who uh, join us for the mini lessons and they are asked to make comments right after the lesson and they're also asked to fill out um, feedback sheets. We, f we find these very valuable because they're in the trenches, they know what works and what doesn't. So um, our TAs are very grateful to hear their comments in particular. Yeah, but from the departments, as Alexa said, nothing really. We, we've never asked it of them. Um, because they all seem so busy. <laughs> however, we do tell the ITIs, we do record all of their mini lessons, and we tell them up front that if a department requests to see an example, let's say, of their teaching, um, if we've recommended that they are ready to teach and they want to see a sample, this has never happened, by the way, <laughs> but we do tell them that we would with their permission, show a, a part of the video. And it's, again, like I said, never happened. Okay, um, if there are other questions, we just have a couple more minutes, so feel free to um, use the raise your hand function or send it through the chat. And if there aren't any other questions, um, or if you folks need some time, uh, I'm sure Ann and Alexis would be happy to answer questions via email. Is that correct? Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, and mm -hmm. actually, uh, 
Elizabeth, I don't know if you want to share the email. I should have put it on the slides, which I did not, but um, mm -hmm. I can add that and resend it to you. Um, yeah, why don't you do that? And okay. uh, so when I do share your PowerPoint, mm -hmm. I have your email. That's okay, great. sure. Mm -hmm. um, well, thank you everyone for the time you've taken from your afternoons to participate in our first webinar. Um, and um, we will be sharing all of this on the ITA list. And um, we hope to do another webinar in the future. Um, this was our first and we were, had lots of um, learning, <laughs> learning experiences with the technology. So if you have an interest in being um, a participant in a future webinar, please reach out to me and um, we can see about putting uh, something together that would be of interest to the uh, group. Um, but I just want to give another big heartfelt thanks to Anne and Alexis for being willing to um, experiment with this format and being willing to share all of their expertise and knowledge that they have developed um, over the uh, years at Drexel with all of us on the list. Um, we definitely appreciate it. So thank you. And uh, I'm sure everyone is applauding behind their <laughs> <laughs> well. But we thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, people are applauding through the chat function. Even. <laughs> we can see them all. Thank you all for your very, very kind remarks. Thank you. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go ahead and um, end the webinar um, and look for follow up information on the email list. Um, and uh, please get in touch with me if you have questions about this webinar or future webinars. All right. Okay, thank you. Great. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>